The Russian occupiers shelled 39 settlements in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions the day before. 60 objects were damaged or completely destroyed. These included residential buildings, a coke plant, a railway station, a construction base, a shopping center, the National Police Department, the prosecutor's office building, a power substation and a garage cooperative. At least 14 civilians were killed and another 15 were wounded. The oil refinery in Lysychansk was hit again. The enterprise is located on the road between Lysychansk and Bakhmut. The road remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces, but the Russian occupiers are constantly targeting it. The enemy also shelled the azot plant in Severodonetsk for people were killed. The enemy deployed all its forces to seize Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. But after three months it advanced a little. That is why it continues to shell these cities. Especially the places of concentration of people, the Russians once again shelled the territory of the Azot Enterprise, where, as everyone knows, a number of shelters have been placed. Sergei Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration. The joint forces repulsed nine enemy attacks in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Combat continues in six locations. The Ukrainian military destroyed 38 units of the enemy's equipment. Anti-aircraft defense units downed one Zala operational tactical and manned aerial complex and six Orlan stand type drones. They also destroyed the enemy's Su-25 attack aircraft over the Zaporizhia region. Meanwhile, in Mariupol, where no gas, electricity and water supplies have been available for months, the invaders have installed a mobile TV set that broadcasts Russian propaganda television, said Petro Andriushenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. In order to make Mariupol, residents believe in a claim that life has allegedly improved, the occupiers are turning on the propaganda. There were newspapers which have been used to start fires in stoves. And you need electricity to turn on the TV. But the bastards have found a way out. Mobile TV from the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations. Yesterday, the first mobile TV was set up in Schidny district in Mariupol. Now, right here against a background of ruins and mass graves, Mariupol residents are being told about alleged improvements and alleged crimes of the Ukrainian army. Petro Andrushchenko, advisor to the mayor of Mariupol. The Russian forces shelled the border areas of the Sumer region again. Eight explosions near Tostodubova were reported. Another seven near the village of Boyaro Lezhachi. The enemy was probably firing with mortars. This morning the occupiers launched four cruise missiles that targeted Zaporizhia. One of them was downed by air defense forces. In an Arhodar Zaporizhia region, Russian occupiers broke into the apartment of legitimately elected mayor of the city Dmitro Orlov, who had moved to Zaporizhia after an Arhodar was occupied. Seven armed occupiers and one woman broke into my apartment, most likely a correspondent for a propaganda channel. They came knowing that the owners had not been there for a long time. In order to get to my house, they first damaged the front door of the entrance and then the door of the apartment. Dmitro Orlov, mayor of Nerhodar. Operational Command South informs that the Russian occupiers are preparing the mobilization in the Kherson region. Local residents are being forced to fight against the Ukrainian army. They are also trying to induce people to cooperate with the enemy or recognize the occupation. And in the Mykolaiv region, disguised in the uniform of the Ukrainian armed forces, Russian soldiers tried to seize the Ukrainian observation post. But with no success. As for the negotiation process with the Kremlin, Ukraine will be ready to return to the negotiating table only after it regains control of all the territories that the occupying army seized after February 24th. This was stated by the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. I'm sure we have to regain all our territories, but there will be a price to pay. We want it back to what it was before the 24th of February. Then we will sit down at the negotiating table. Volodymyr Zelensky, President of Ukraine. Reported by Roman Smoller, Mariana Krejcet, UATV News. Красота.